Happy Easter! Happy Easter! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. He has. Well, we have a tradition here at Osable Grove that when your birthday is on a Sunday, we will sing to you. And I asked our confirmation class, should we still do it even though it's Easter? And they said, Jaden, remember? You said, absolutely, we should. So my niece, Abby, it is her birthday, and it is also Kurt Schobert's birthday. So we will sing happy birthday, Kurt and Abby. <laughs> Yesterday we thought death had won. Yesterday we thought all was lost. Yesterday we thought Christ was gone. But not today. Today we know that love has won. Today we know that hope is real. Today we know that Christ is here. We have a reason to hope. We have a reason to sing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ is risen today. Let us pray. Dear Lord, on this beautiful morning, we remember the gift that you have given us. That you have conquered the grave, conquered death, and love us each and every one so much that your grace flows down and covers us all. Amen. Please now rise and greet one another and pass the peace. <laughs> Church. 
So they say these are scripture candy. Thank you, Lord, for these jelly beans that remind me of your love. I started with a sinful heart keeping me from you above. Red represents the blood you shed to provide salvation free. White shows the cleansing of my sin as I put my faith in thee. Yellow is from heaven above, my new home I'll have someday. Green is the growth I will see as I read your word and pray. Purple shows you, you are king of all, the one I choose to obey. Thank you, Lord, for these jelly beans. They mean more than words can say. So a reminder that you can always pray. You always have to think about going to God first in our prayers when we need something, when we just want to say thank you. Well, that's up to mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> you almost caught me. Too bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Up to mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for jelly beans, for Easter baskets, and most of all, we thank you for you. Be with us now in this hour of worship. Be with us when we're with family and friends today. Be with us always. Amen. Please stand for our opening hymn and be blessed.
the Gospel of Luke, the women come to the tomb, and to their surprise, instead of finding Jesus, they find angels. The angels tell the women, Jesus is not here. And when the answer is met with confusions, the angel, angels say, remember what we told you. Remember is one of the last words that Jesus used at the Last Supper. And it's one of the first words we hear at the empty tomb. Remember. So remembering all that God has given, let us pray our prayer of confession together. The stone is rolled away. We assume it is a mistake. The angels say, he is not here. We assume their news is fake. The women tell the story, but we do not want to hear it. Peter runs to the tomb, but we do not understand. Forgive us, God, for thinking an empty tomb is nothing more than a prank. Forgive us for seeing discarded burial cloths and still holding tight to death. Forgive us for pushing away reasons to hope when you are alive and well in the world. Teach us to see what you see. Unravel the threads of our unbelief. Amen. The angels tell the women, remember what Jesus has told you. So church, remember this. You are seen. You are forgiven. You are held in God's grace. All of this is true. Grace and mercy abound. Amen.
Christ is risen, shout Hosanna for his time. Tell the good news. 
and all this to the eleven and to all the rest. This story is when the world discovers salvation. And it depends on the testimony of these first eyewitnesses. These women are the first to preach the good news. But it is not the only reaction to the empty tomb. Not everyone was quite ready to preach. There are two distinct reactions on this first Easter. The women believe and are moved to testimony through their experience. And then there's Peter. Peter's response is to be amazed. The difference between the two hinges on their response and the action that they will take. Unlike the women, Peter returns home with no message to share. No sooner do the women share their testimony with the other disciples and their words struck the apostles as nonsense that they didn't believe. But Peter, <clears throat> Peter runs to the tomb. And when he bent over to look inside, he saw only the linen cloth. Then he returned home, wondering what had happened. And this is how our reading ends today. Peter alone allows for some possibility that what the women have recounted may be true, but he has to see it for himself. Neither their words or the words of Jesus are enough for Peter to trust the truth of what has been testified. Sure enough, after running to the tomb to find it empty, he returns home. And I imagine he sits there for a while and just has to wrap his head around all that has happened and all that he has seen. <coughs> so two different responses. So what does that mean for us today? When we say that this truth gives us hope, does it end there? Are we like Peter who must sit with the news for a while, or are we the women? The empty tomb is a message. It is God calling on people to act. God speaks very clearly on Easter morning, saying the world is different, and those who follow this pathway of the risen Lord, we are called to live differently. We are an Easter people. The good news is not something to observe. It is something that demands our response, demands us to go into action within the world. The Christian movement has always depended on the testimony of Jesus and his followers, followers who are moved beyond amazement to action. Our hope doesn't only become something we possess, our hope turns into something we give. The word hope is a noun. It is a thing that we have, that we possess, but it can also be a verb. Can we see hope as an action we need to take? I believe so. I hope so. So once you walk up to that tomb and see it empty with the stone rolled back away, your role as a follower of Jesus takes on more significance. It takes on some urgency. No longer is it time to stand idly by, to observe, to wait, to accept the world the way it is. The knowledge of resurrection urges us forward, urges us as those who believe to walk the pathway of discipleship, to work for hope to risk being hopeful, to challenge those who want to take away our hope, to receive hope, to know hope, and then to share hope. To say not only I have hope, but I am hope. We take this on, we take up the cross, because we know that the cross, no matter how difficult it is to bear, will not triumphant over the promises of the God who empties the tomb, the God who rolls away the stone, the God who gave us a miracle. 
we will be the ones who hold on to hope and hold on to Jesus, for our new life has begun. And all of this is good news. Alleluia and amen. Thanks. 
should. Lord, I will just bow down. I'm just gonna stay still. Please stand now for affirmation. We may weep through the longest nights. We may stare at the empty tomb with more questions than answers. We may run our fingers over the burial cloths and still long for more. But today, we are people of hope. We believe in new beginnings. We believe that God who created the world is stronger than death. We believe that Jesus abides among us, healing, teaching, and leaving fingerprints throughout this world. We believe that a tomb could not hold him. We believe that the sun does rise. We believe that Peter was there with questions, awe, and the faith the size of a mustard seed. We believe that the story is not over yet, for God is among us. Today, we are people of hope. Give thanks to God, for God is good. Let us gratefully give our offerings to the glory of God and in praise of the resurrection.
and beyond. Call us forth into your world, guided by Christ's Spirit. Amen.
for his mother, Jamie, and all of his family who love and support him, including us. May our prayers continue as he moves forward with more tests. And we pray with hope and with thanksgiving for Amelia's brother, Scott, having a kidney transplant surgery, for having a friend who is donating his kidney after being on a list for many years. We ask that you surround the doctors and the nurses and all those that will be caring for him in the coming days. Be with them. Give them strength and encouragement. And we pray too with joy that this day is Easter, but also holds birthdays of people that we love dearly. We thank you for Abby and Kurt and Mary Ellen and all that make birthdays today and Carol's son. So we thank you for the joy of celebrations. And we thank you with time with family and friends in worship and around tables later today. And we thank you for time spent in Florida to see a brother for the reunion of Linda and her brother Rick. Be with him, continue to hold him close, to hold him in strength and encouragement with his cancer. And we thank you for who he is. Lord, we pray for Dr. Buck, Dick's friend, just being diagnosed with stage four liver cancer. Be with him in the coming days and give him moments of tender times with friends and family. We know that you conquered death so that we do not have to, and for that we are grateful. God of the dawn, we start with our hopes. Thank you for the gifts of this world that instill in us a hope that never ends. Thank you for the curiosity of children, for jelly beans, for the sound of your people singing in unison, for crowded tables and neighborly kindness, for the sun after the rain, the spring after the frost, love after loss, and faith after doubt. Like Peter, we have countless reasons to hold on to hope. Highest among them is the joy and promise of this day. Thank you for these holy breadcrumbs on the journey of faith. Before we found ourselves in the garden, before the joy and the alleluias of this day, we found ourselves at the foot of the cross. So for the things that erode our hope, for the things that stitch doubt and fear into our hearts, we ask for your comforting hand. Wrap your arms around all who are still locked in that upper room. Wrap your arms around all who cannot find healing after the longest night. Wrap your arms around all who look for reasons to hope, but cannot find those breadcrumbs amidst reasons to grieve. Holy God, flag, fan the flames of our faith. Invite us to step out of our boats. Use us to care for those in need, to tell your story and to build a better world. We remember and we believe. So with awestruck, wildly beating, grateful hearts, we run toward you. With feet in the garden and eyes on the cross, we pray to you saying the words your son taught us to pray. Our Father,
stand for our closing hymn. of God be with you now and always. Amen.